In today's video, you're going to learn how to frame a small roof. And if you look behind me, it's going to be a valley roof. So if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house and saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. And I hope you like this video because I'm risking my $1,000 camera on top of a roof. All right, so if you look here, we got a gable roof that already came from the truss maker. And then we got this little bump out, which we always get these gable ends and then we frame in the rest of the valley. Because we got those little prefab valley ones, but it's way better to build this yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to put the layout, cuff the rafters and all that. The first thing you're gonna to have to do is plumb up this truss. So you just gotta get it with your level plumb. So all you gotta do is put your level up against this, get it plumb, and then tack a brace to hold it plumb, but you don't want it up real high because this is where your ridge board's gonna be. So this board that we got here is the next step. So after this is plumbed up, you need to take a 16 foot board or however long board you need to get from your peak to your other roof level. So what you need to do is just lay a board up here, just like you see here, take your level, and keep sliding it up or down the roof until you get it nice and level so if you see here we got our um, roof nice and level and now after you do that you need to make sure that this board is square with this gable truss and that's pretty simple to do there's a couple ways of doing it so the best method i found is measure from this edge of the roof to the center of this truss, which all you gotta do is find the center, and then measure down, make a mark, pull over from the edge of the roof, then come up to this top part, hook on here and measure over the same distance and make a mark. That's gonna be the center of this board. So why this is so critical is you need to know exactly where the peak of your roof is gonna hit. So right here is going to be the exact center of the roof. So if you move this board out of the way, right there is the exact center of the roof. So when you put this board up here, make sure you tack just one nail in it, at least just to hold it. All right, so in order to get the measurement for this ridge board that goes right under this board, all you got to do is come over here, you see this? That's where the board's going to actually set once it's in here. And it's a half inch from here to the top of that mark. So all you gotta do is come down here to where this board hits the roof, hold your tape measure at a half inch, like you see there, and right where it intersects the roof at a half inch, right there at that mark, that's gonna be the top of our ridge board where it intersects the roof. And then wherever that measurement is from right there to where it hits this truss is how long your ridge board has to be and let's get that cut. All right, so that measurement that was underneath that board going across the top from the truss to the roof is 142 and three quarters. So I already pulled from the edge of the two by six and got it marked right here. So you take a framing square. As you can see here, the roof pitch is 712. So use this seven on the framing square. Then you use this 12 on this side of the framing square. So that's gonna be a 712 pitch. And this is the angle we want, the long seven. So to do that, you just lay your seven mark right against the edge of the board and then slot it over to get your 12 on the edge board. So here's your seven, here's your 12. And then you just slot it until you get lined up with that mark that we made for your measurement. So it's right there, hold it down really snug. All right. So that's the point going to be right where the top of that board was on top of the roof. So that's the angle we want. All right, there it's uh, anchored to the side of the gable. And if you look here, I have it toenail about four on each side. Came up here. It looks like we got about four nails on each side too. And make sure you use three inch or longer nails when you're doing this framing. I actually prefer three and a quarter ring shanks. And uh, if you look at the reveal from the top to the bottom of that uh, board put up top, it's a nice even reveal. So we're gonna check with the level and if it's still perfect, we're gonna start the layout. 
Now what we do, we're gonna put a two foot layout across here next. All right, we got our two foot layout on here and depending on what size joists you're doing, you might wanna do 16 on center. So you have to look at a span chart. I'll put a link in the description for a span chart so you know what size lumber to use. But do your two foot on center, just get on the edge of the truss and then pull two foot. Make sure you put your X on the left side of the line if you're gonna be pulling off of it like this. And if you're gonna be butting it like this, just be sure you put the line on the two foot then put the X on this side of the line. All right, so as you can see, we got our layout on there really nice. And then when you get up to this point, you're gonna to wanna to put a nail right in the center, not on top of this board, but right where the actual peak is. So you put a nail here and then pull your chalk line. I can see this chalk line, come clear down to here and pull it right where your truss is going to be intersecting that plywood so you got a nice chalk line because right there is where the edge of your rafters are going to be hitting theoretically the next step is we got to go off this line and measure over an inch and three quarter and chalk another line because that's where the edge of our sleeper is going to be and i know from building the other one the measurements inch and three quarter over to where the sleeper is and how that works i'll show you here in just a minute all right we got those boards nailed down that is where our rafters are going to intersect and I want to show you a little trick. If you take a two by four, a scrap two by four, nothing fancy. And if you're wondering how to get angles like this really easy, just butt your board up to where you want to go like this. But then take a board like this. And then all you got to do is scrub a line. And that's going to give you the angle of this intersection and if you want to know the exact degree just take your speed square and lay it on it so for instance if you lay this on that line i just made looks like it's giving us a little over about a 48 degree angle or so so that's how you can easily get these weird angles if you're wondering all right so the next step is we come back down to our two foot layout here's going to be our first rafter and you're going to want to measure from this point this is the bottom side of the rafter, clear down to where it intersects two foot over here. I'm gonna show you how to get a two foot mark right here. All right, so if you're wondering how do we know from where this two foot layout is going to intersect down here. So I found a really easy method. Just take your framing square, it's two foot from edge to edge. Just lay it up against this gable truss and that's going to be exactly where that rafter is going to hit. So if you slide it across, it's hard to do the camera in my hand, but if you just slide it nice and easy. All right, if you look there, I don't even see the camera, but it scribed just a little indention across the wood. That's going to be the left side of where your rafter is going to hit. And now what you do is just measure down an inch and a half from that, then put the X on this side of the line, and that's going to be the point you measure down to. All right, so there's those marks after I scribed them with the actual pencil. So nice clear marks. And we're measuring from this point clear up to this point of the first rafter. And it has to be on the same side. It can't be on this side. It has to be on the exact same side. So I put a nail right there to hook to. So go ahead and hook on to your nail and pull the tape down. All right, guys, this is where you need to pay close attention. This is where a lot of people get in trouble. So the first thing you need to do is crown your board up and that's going to be the top of your rafter. To do that, you just look down your board like this and this is the crown side. If it's humped up, that's the crown. And now, before you even put your measurement on that board, you want to get a 712 or whatever pitch you're using for your roof. If you look here, right here is our common 7. That's what we consider the short seven of the pitch. So you got a long seven, you got a short seven. We cut the long seven on the other board. This one's a short, so we do this first. So, all right, to make that a little easier to see, to get a 712 shortcut, you put your speed square on the board and you turn it until, if we're doing a 712, there's the seven. It's lined up on the edge of the board. So that's how you get a 712. So if you're sitting here like this, you would turn it until you hit your seven up here, and then you'd make a line. That'd be a 712 angle. All right, so that's marked, and I already went ahead and cut it. So that's gonna be our first cut before we do anything else. So let me show you something. 
So if you look, this is where your ridge board goes. So that's where it's gonna be sitting, like that. So now that first measurement, you pull that and make a mark next. All right, so after you got that first pitch cut, now you need to pull from that top point down to the right side of the board that we pulled from up top. So if you're looking at that rafter, it was on the right side of it where it for, pulled from point to point, which was the longest point of the board. So to make it easy to understand, if it was sitting up there like that, we pulled from this point down to this point. So flip the board over and go ahead and make your mark. All right, so here's the mark I just made measuring down from that top angle. And here, we wanna do a long seven going this way. So, and to do that again as a refresher, you find your seven mark on your square on this side, then your 12 inch mark on this side. That's how you do a seven 12. If your the roof is central, well, slide it. All right, so that angles your long seven. We go ahead and mark that. All right, so now, now that we got our long seven right here, we need to turn the degree of our saw 30 degrees. And if you wondering why, it's because the roof pitches up. So to intersect it, you need an angle slipping this way for that roof coming down. And the easiest way to get that measurement is just Google the angle degree of a 712, 612, 512, whatever you're doing. To be honest with you, that's the easiest, quickest way. And I'm here to show you the easy way to build a small roof. All right, to make this easy, I already got my degree. We know we need 30, my saw, you just have to do this. There's 30 degree. And if you are interested in any of these tools, I'll put a link in the description so you can go uh, buy them yourself as far as the squares or the saw. I'm an affiliate with Home Depot, so if you buy them, I get a little kickback and I appreciate it. All right, so there's our 30 degree angle. As you can see, I have it set there. And we know the pitch of the roof is sloped up this way, so it's kind of visualized which way you want to go. So we're gonna get it there. All right, and hold your deck of your saw nice and flat. I swear, every time I go to record, the air compressor kicks on. Oh, it just quit. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I just did there. Let me zoom the camera back out. All right, this is very interesting for people that has never seen it before, so let's do this. All right, so here's your rafter we just cut. It's gonna go like this. Here's the ridge board it's gonna sit against. And then down here, that's the bottom of the angle. You can see how we made it sloped. And that's gonna follow the slope of the pre-existing roof. So now the next thing is we got to get up there and make sure it fits and I'm pretty sure it will. All right, there it is guys. That is the first rafter. So if you look down here, we hit that mark almost perfect. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> uh, but if you look on this side, we're on that mark really well. So all you do is just lay that there and then lay it up there. Always tack it from behind that ridge board first. And if you come down here, put at least five, six nails in this side, a couple in this side, and then one through the top, and actually shoot the top one first. And then if you come back here on this side, as you can see, I put nails right through the back of it right there. And just a little tip, something I meant to mention earlier, it's like take a string line, hook it to the other side of the ridge board, and then hook it to uh, the other side there, and then run a string line, so that way, as you're running your rafters, you're not pushing that ridge board out as you go on accident. So as you can see here, we're nice and straight. That's what we like. It's getting a little windy up here, but now the next thing you do is pretty simple. It's just like you did the first one. All you do is put your square against this and to make your next mark for that one, just like we did on our first one here, and just keep that same pattern up as you go and make sure you get it on your layout as you go. So more or less, just repeat the same process till you get to the peak of the roof. So here's a quick little time lapse. And I, what I did is took the two by sixes up on the roof with me because it's way easier instead of getting up and down the ladder. But it's a little more of a pain, but it saves a lot of time. All right, so there is the finished product. And something I wanted to show you, remember I was telling you about that chalk line from earlier, how I measured every inch and three quarter. 
if you look to see why if you put a straight edge that's why i got to hold back inch and three quarter because obviously if that comes down it's going to have to be offset to make up for it and if you're wondering how i got the inch and three quarter if you come back here if you're coming off square if you slid a two by four under here obviously that's how you get that inch and three quarter mark right there so i want to elaborate on that a little bit and i uh, put a little cross brace in this far end one because it's a longer span and i'm probably gonna end up putting a couple more in here on these other ones but if you look down through there it all looks good i want to show you how you check to make sure everything's right watch this reveal as i go down look at this boom it's all almost perfect and lines up really well looks like i got lucky this time and if you look down this side same thing look at my big shadow boom that board that's sticking up is obviously that brace holding it but there you go and i'll go down below and show you too so here it is from the top looking down and this is going to look just like this by tomorrow let me zoom in over there a little bit then i'm going to show you how to do that sheathing like that's on it right now how to do it over here tomorrow so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications so you can see that video when it comes out but that's all there is to building a small roof with a valley rafter setup. So let me go down below and show you looking up. All right, watch the reveal on this side. Boom. Nice and pretty. Let's go to the other side. All right, this side, let's watch the reveal. And boom, they all line up really nice. And I'm not doing this to brag. I just want to show you what to do to double check your work. It's always important to do. All right, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and comment below if you learned anything. And I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Peace.